The Thankless Muse by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The muses ring my bell and run away. I spy you, rogues, behind the evergreen. You, wild fally, a romper in the hay. And you, terpsichore, you long-legged queen. When I was young, you used to come and stay. But now that I grow older, tis well seen what tricks ye put upon me. Well a day. How many a summer evening have ye been sitting about my doorstep, fain to sing and tell old tales, while through the fragrant dark burned the large planets, throbbed and brooding sound of crickets, and the tree toad's ceaseless ring, and in the meads the firefly lit her spark, where from my threshold sank the veil profound. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Blue Roses of Academus by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. So late and long the shadows lie under the quadrangle wall. From such a narrow strip of sky, so scant an hour the sunbeams fall. They hardly come to touch at all this cool sequestered corner, where beside the chapel belfry tall I cultivate my small parterre poor sickly blooms of academe, recluses of the college close, where none like pallor would beseem the violet better than the rose. There's not a bud among you blows with scent or hue to lure the bee, only the thorn that on you grows, only the thorn grows hardily. Pale cloisterers, have you lost so soon the way to blush? Do you forget how once beneath the enamoured moon you climbed against the parapet to touch the breast of Juliet, warm with a kiss, wet with a tear, in gardens of the Capulet? Far south, my flowers, not here, not here. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Winds of Dawn by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Drew Conway, 27th of November, 2016, Kent. Whither do you blow, for now the moon is low? Whence is it that you come, and where is it you go? All night the air was still, the cricket's song was shrill, but now there runs a hum and rustling through the trees. A breath of coolness wakes as on Canadian lakes and on Atlantic seas and each high alpine lawn begin the winds of dawn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Anacreontic by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I would not be a voyager on the windy seas. More sweet to me this bank where crickets chirp and bees buzz drowsy sunshine minstrelsies. I would not bide on lonely heights where shepherds dwell. At twilight tide the sounds that from the valley swell, soft breathing lute and herdsman's bell, are sweeter far than music of cold mountain rills. The evening star wakes love and song below, but chills with mist and breeze the gloomy hills. I would not woo some storm-browed Juno, queenly fair, soft eyes of blue, and sudden blushes unaware do not net my heart in silken snare. I do not love the eyrie, but low woodland nest of cushioned dove, not wind, but calm not toil but rest and sleep in grassy meadow's breast. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bumblebee by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Drew Conway 27th of November, 2016 Kent 
As I lay yonder in tall grass, a drunken bumblebee went past, delirious with honey toddy. The golden sash about his body could scarce keep in his swollen belly, distent with honey suckle jelly. Rose liquor and the sweet pea wine had filled his soul with song divine. Deep had he drunk the warm night through, his hairy thighs were wet with dew. Full many an antic he had played, while the world went round through sleep and shade. Oft had he lit with thirsty lip, some flowers cup nectared sweets to sip. When on smooth petals he would slip, or over tangled stamens trip and headlong in the pollen rolled, crawl out quite dusted over with gold. Or else his heavy feet would stumble against some bud and down he'd tumble amongst the grass, there lie and grumble. In low soft bass, poor maudlin bumble, with tipsy hum on sleepy wing, he buzzed a glee, a bacchic thing, which, wandering strangely in the moon, he learned from grigs that sing in June. Unknown to sober bees who dwell through their dark hours in waxen cell, when south wind floated him away, the music of the summer day, lost something, sure it was a pain, to miss that dainty starlight strain. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Water Lilies at Sunset by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Mine eyes have seen when once at sunset hour White lily flocks that edged a lonely lake All rose and sank upon the lifting swell that swayed their long stems lazily and lapped their floating pads and stirred among the leaves and when the sun from western gates of day poured coloured flames they kissed to ruddy shame so blushed through snowy petals that they glowed like roses morning blown in dewy bowers when garden walks lie dark with early shade that so their perfumed chalices were brimmed with liquid glory till they overflowed and spilled rich lights and purple shadows out, that splashed the pool with gold, and stained its waves in tints of violet and ruby blooms. And when the flashing gem that lit the day dropped in its far blue casket of the hills, the rainbow paintings faded from the mirror, the wine-dark shades grew black, the gilding dimmed, while paling slow through tender amber hues the crimsoned lilies blanched to coldest white and wanly shivered in the evening breeze when twilight closed the earliest dewdrops fell all frosty chill deep down their golden hearts they shrank at that still touch as maidens shrink when love's first footstep frights with sweet alarms the untrod wildness of their virgin breasts then shut their ivory cups and dipping low their folded beauties in the gloomy wave they nodded drowsily and heaved in sleep, but sweeter far than summer dreams at dawn. Their mingled breaths from out the darkness stole across the silent lake, the winding shores, the shadowy hills that rose in lawny slopes, the marsh among whose reeds the wild fowl screamed, the dusky woodlands where the night came down. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Between the Flowers by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org By Joshua Urianza An open door and doorsteps wide With pillared vines on either side And terrace flowers, stair with stair Standing in pots of earthenware Where stiff processions filed around Black on the smooth sienna ground Two prison bulbs now blossom there which in moisty hot house air lay winter long in patient rows, glass snugly in from Christmas snows, 
tuberoses with white waxy gems in bunches on their reed like stems. Their fragrance forced by art too soon to mingle with the sweets of June. So breathes the thin blue smoke that steals from the ashes of the gilt pastilles. Burn slowly as the brazier swings in dim saloons of eastern kings. I saw the kala's arching cup with yellow spatics standing up, its liquid scents to stir and mix the golden mist of toddy sticks. Roses in purple for trusa drops, camillas which the gardener crops, to make the sickening wreaths that lie on coffins when our loved ones die. These all and many more were there, monsters and glad foras rare. Of tropical broad leaves, grown rank, drinking the waters of the tank, wherein the lotus lilies bathe, all curious forms of spur and spade. Pitcher and sack and cactus thorn, there in the fresh New England morn. But where the sun came colored through, translucent petals wet with dew, the interspace was carpeted with oriole lights and nodes of red orange and blue and violet that wove strange figures as they met of airier tissue brighter blooms than tumble from the persian looms so at the pontiff's feast they tell from the board's edge the goblet fell spilled from its throat the purple tide and stained the pavement far and wide such steps why sheba trod upon up to the throne of solomon so bright the angel crowded steep, which Israel's vision scaled in sleep. What one is she whose feet shall dare tread that illuminated stair? Like Sheba, queen, the angels fair, oh listen in the morning air. The blossoms all are hanging still, the queen is standing on the sill. No Sheba she, her virgin zone claims her royalty alone such royalty the lion's own yet all too cheap the pattern stone that paves king's palaces to fill the pressures of her gaiter's hill the girlish grace that lit her face made sunshine in a dusky place the old silk hood demurring quaint wherein she seemed an altar saint Fresh tinted through in setting gold, of dingy carving and tarnished gold. Her eyes, the candles in that shrine, making Madonna's face to shine. Lingering I pass, but evermore, abide with me the open door. The doorsteps wide, the flowers that stand, in brilliant ranks on either hand. The two white pillars and the vine, a bittersweet and lush wood vine. And from my weary paths, as far as Sheba or the angels are, between upon the wooden sill, thou queen of hearts, art standing still. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. As You Like It by Henry Aviers Read for LibriVox.org by Joshua Urianza. Here while I read, the light forsakes the pain. Metaphorsis of the twilight gray. Into green azels of Epping or Ardeen, the level lines of Prince stretch far away. The book leaves whisper like the forest leaves, a smell of ancient woods, a breeze of morn. A breath of violets from the mossy paths, and hark, the voice of hounds, the royal horn, which muffled in the ferny coverts deep, utters the three sweet notes that sound we call, as riding two by two between the oaks, come on the paladins and ladies all. The court will rest from chase in this smooth glade, that slopes to meet yon little rushy stream. Where in the shallows nod the arrowheads, and the blue flower de luce banners gleam. The gamekeepers are coupling of the hounds, 
The pages hang bright scarfs upon the boats. The new slain quarry lies upon the turf. Whereon, but now he with the hurt did browse. The silk pavilion shines among the trees. The mighty pasties and the flag on strong. Give cheer to the dear heart of many a knight. And many a dame whose beauty lives in song. Meanwhile, a stagging improvised and rude rises whereon the maskers and mimes play for their sport a pleasant interlude, fantastic, gallant, pointing at the times. Their green room is the wide midsummer wood. Down some far winding gallery, the deer, the dappled dead head of that sylvan shrub, starts as the distant ranting strikes his ear. They use no traverses nor painted screen to help along their naked outdoor wit. Only the forest lends its leafy scene, yet wonderfully well they please the pit. The plaudits echo through the wide parquet, where the fair audience upon the grass, each night beside his lady love, is set, while overhead the merry winds do pass. The little river murmurs in its reeds, and somewhere in the verdurous solitude, the wood thrush drops a cool contralto note, an orchestra well tuned unto their mood. As runs the play, so runs the afternoon. The curtain and the sun fall side by side. The epilogue is spoke, the twilight come. Then homeward through the darkening glades, they ride. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old City by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Caroline. The Old City. Ancient city, down thy street, minstrels make their music sweet sound of bells is on the air fountains sing in every square where from dawn to shut of day maidens walk and children play and at night when all are gone the waters in the dark sing on till the moonrise and the breeze whiten the horse chestnut trees cool thou liest leisured slow on the plains of long ago and unvexed of fretful trades through thy rich and dim arcades overlooking lands below terraced to thy green plateau dear old city it is long since i heard thy minstrel's song since i heard thy church bells deep since i watched thy fountains leap yet whichever way i turn still i see the sunset burn at the ending of the street where the chestnut branches meet where between the gay bazaars maidens walk with eyes like stars and the slippered merchants go on the pavements to and fro upland winds blow through my sleep moonrise glimmers what a sleep till awakening thou dost seem like a city of a dream like a city of the air builded high aloof and fair such as childhood used to know on the plains of long ago end of poem this recording is in the public domain amethyst by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Not the green eaves of our young woods alone shelter new violets by the spring rains kissed. In the hard quartz by some old April sown, blossoms time's flower, the steadfast amethyst. Here's pansy there for thoughts, weak thoughts though fair. June sees their opening june their swift decay but those stone virgins stand for thoughts more rare whose patient crystals colored day by day might i so cut my flowers within the rock and prison there their sweet escaping breath 
their petals then the winter's frost should mock and only time's slow chisel work their death if out of those embedded purple blooms were quarried cups to hold the purple wine greek drinkers thought the glorious maddening fumes were cooled with radiance of that gem divine might i so wed the crystal and the grape passion's red heart and plastic arts endeavor delirium should take on immortal shape dancing and blushing in strong rock forever in the poem this recording is in the public domain katie did by henry a beers read for LibriVox.org by drew conway twenty seventh of november two thousand and sixteen kent in a windy treetop sitting singing at the fall of dew Katie watched the bats a-flitting while the twilight's curtains drew close around her till she only saw the branches in the sky rocking late and rocking lonely anchored on the darkness high and the song that she was singing in the windy treetop swinging were under the tree under the tree the fox is digging a pit for me when the early stars were sparkling overhead and down below fireflies twinkled through the darkling thickets she had heard footsteps go voice of her false lover speaking laughing to his sweetheart new half my heart for thee unbreaking did not katie love me true then no longer was she singing but through all the wood kept ringing katie did katie did katie did love thee and the fox is digging a grave for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain narcissus by henry a beers read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk where the black hemlock slants athwart the stream he came to bathe the sun's pursuing beam laid a warm hand upon him as he stood naked while noonday silence filled the wood holding the boughs o'erhead with cautious foot he felt his way along the mossy root that edged the brimming pool then paused and dreamed half like a dryad of the tree he seemed half like the naiad of the stream below suspended there between the water's flow and the green treetop world the lovesick air coaxing with softest touch his body fair a little longer yet to be content outside of its own crystal element and he still lingering at the brink looked down and marked the sunshine fleck with gold the brown and sandy floor which paved that woodland pool but then within the shadows deep and cool which the close hemlocks on the surface made two eyes met his yet darker than that shade and shining through the watery foliage dim two white and slender arms reached up to him comest thou again now all the woods are still fair shape nor even echo from the hill calls her narcissus would her voice were thine dear speechless image and could answer mine her i but hear and thee i may but see yet echo thou art happy unto me for though thyself art but a voice sad maid thy love 
the substance is and my love shade alas for never may i kiss those dumb sweet lips nor ever hope to come into that shadow world that lies somewhere somewhere between the water and the air alas for never shall i clasp that form that mocks me yonder seeming firm and warm but if i leap to its embrace the cold and yielding flood is all my arms enfold all creatures else save only me can share my beauties be it but to stroke my hair or hold my hand in theirs or hear me speak the village wives will laugh and clap my cheek the forest nymphs will beg me for a kiss to make me blush or hide themselves by this clear brook to see me bathe but i must pine loving not me but this dear ghost of mine then bending down the boughs until they dipped their broad green fronds into the wave he slipped and floating breast high from the branches hung his body with the current idly swung and ever and anon he caught the gleam of a white shoulder swimming in the stream pressed close to his and two young eyes of black under the dimpling surface answered back his own just out of kissing distance then the vain and passionate longing came again still baffled still renewed he loosed his hold upon the boughs and strove once more to fold to his embrace that fine unbodied shape but the quick apparition made escape and once again his empty arms took in only the water and the shadows thin thus every day when noon lay bright and hot on all the plains there came to this cool spot under the hemlocks by the deepening brook narcissus phoebus darling there to look and pour upon his picture in the flood till once a peeping dryad of the wood tracking his steps along the slender path which he between the tree trunks trodden hath misses the boy on whom her amorous eyes were wont to feed but where he stood she spies a new-made yellow flower that still doth seem to woo his own pale reflex in the stream whom phoebus kisses when the woods are still and only ceaseless echo from the hill unprompted cries narcissus end of poem this recording is in the public domain Nunc Dumnitzis by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org, by Joshua Urianza. Highlands of Navasink, by the blue ocean's brink, let your bases drink deep of the sea. Tide that comes flooding up, fill me a stirrup cup, pledge me a parting sup, now I go free. Wall palisades, I know were greener glades. Deeper glens, darker shades, hemlock and pine. Far toward the morning lie, under a bluer sky, lifted by cliffs as high, haunts that are mine. Marshes of Havkinsack, see, I am going back, where the Quinnipiac winds to the bay. Down its long meadow track, piled with myriad sack, 
where in wide Ruvac camps the salt hay. Spirable trinity, never again to be, see mark and gold to me as I walk down. Chimes on the upper air, calling in vain to prayer, squandering your music where roars the black town. Bless me once ere I riot, off to God's countryside, where in the treetops hide, bell free and bell. Tongue of the steeple towers, telling the slow paced hours. Hell, thou still town of ours, bell done. Farewell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beaver Pond Meadow by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Thou art my dismal swamp, my Everglades. Thou my compagna, where the bison wades Through shallow streaming pools, and sick air decays. Thou my Serbonian bog art, Where o'er leagues of mud, black vomit of the Nile, Crawls in the sun the myriad crocodile. Or thou my Cambridge, or my Lincoln fen, shalt be, A lonely land where stilted men Stalking across the surface waters go. Casting long shadows, and the creaking low canal barge, laden with its marshy hay, disturbs the stagnant ditches twice a day. Thou hast thy crocodiles. On rotten logs afloat the turtle swarm and bask. The frogs, when come the pale, cold twilights of the spring, like distant sleigh bells through the meadows ring. The schoolboy comes on holidays to take the muskrat in its hole, or kill the snake, or fish for bullheads. In the pond at night, the hog snout swollen corpse with belly white I find upon the footways through the sedge, trodden by tramps along the water's edge. Not thine the breath of the salt marsh below, where the, when the tide is out, the mowers go shearing the oozy plain that reeks with brine, more tonic than the incense of the pine. Thou art the sink of all uncleanliness, a drain for slaughter pins. A wilderness of trenches, pockets, quagmires, bogs, where rank the poison sumac grows, and in the tank the water standeth over black and deep, greened o'er with scum. Foul pottages that steep and brew in that dark broth, at night distill malarious fogs, bringing the fever chill. Yet grislier horrors thy recesses hold. The murdered peddler's body, five days old, among the yellow lily pads was found, in yonder pond the new-born babe lay drowned and throttled on the bottom of this moat near where the negro hermit keeps his boat whose wigwam stands beside the swamp whose meals it furnishes fat pouts and mud-spawned eels even so thou hast a kind of beauty wild unwholesome thou the suburbs outcast child behind whose grimy skin and matted hair warm nature works and makes her creature fair summer has wrought a blue and silver border of iris flags and flowers in triple order of white arrowhead round beaver pond and o'er the milkweeds in the swamp beyond tangled the daughter's amber-coloured threads in every foss the bladderwort's bright heads like orange helmets on the surface show richer surprises still thou hast I know the ways that to thy penetralia lead, where in black bogs the sundew's sticky bead and snares young insects, and that rosy lass, sweet Arethusa, blushes in the grass. Once on a Sunday, when the bells were still, following the path under the sandy hill, through the old orchard and across the plank that bridges the dead stream, past many a rank of cattails midway in the swamp, I found a small green mead of dry but spongy ground, entrenched about on every side with sluices, full to the brim of thick lethean juices, the filterings of the marsh. With line and hook, two little French boys from the trenches took frogs for their Sunday's meal and gathered messes of pungent salad from the watercresses. A little isle of foreign soil, it seemed, 
and listening to their outland talk i dreamed that yonder spire above the elm tops calm rose from the village chestnuts of la balm yes many a pretty secret hast thou shown to me o beaver pond walking alone on summer afternoons while yet the swallow skimmed o'er each flaggy plash and gravelly shallow or when september turned the swamps to gold and purple but the year is growing old the golden rod is rusted and the red that streaked october's frosty cheek is dead only the sumac's garnet pom-poms make procession through the melancholy break lo even now the autumnal wind blows cool o'er the ripple the waters of thy pool and red autumnal sunset colors brood where i alone and all too late intrude end of poem this recording is in the public domain high island by henry a beers read for LibriVox.org by drew conway twenty seventh of november two thousand and sixteen kent Pleasant it was at shut of day, when wind and wave had sunk away, to hear as on the rocks we lay the fog bell toll. And grimly through the gathering night, the horn's dull blare from Faulkner's light, snuffed out by ghostly fingers white that round it stole. Somewhere behind its curtain soon, the mist grew conscious of a moon. No more we heard the diving loon scream from the spray. But seated round our driftwood fire, watched the red sparks rise higher and higher, then wandering into night expire and pass away. Down the dark wood the pines among, a lurid glare and firelight flung, so for a while we talked and sung, and then to sleep and heard in dreams the lighthouse bell as all night long in solemn swell the tidal waters rose and fell with soundings deep end of poem this recording is in the public domain Lotus Eating by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Come up once more before mine eyes Sweet halcyon days, warm summer sea Faint orange of the morning skies And dark-lined shores upon the lea Touched with the sunrise, sea and sky, All still on memory's canvas lie, The scattered isles with India ink, Dot the wide backgrounds gold and pink, Unstirring in the Sunday calm, Their profile cedars sharply drawn, Bold black against the flushing dawn, Take shape like clumps of tropic palm night shadows still the distance dim ultramarine where oceans brim upholdeth the horizon rim once more in thought we seem to creep by lonely reefs where seabirds scream ulysses like along the deep borne onward in the ocean stream the sea floor spreadeth glassy still no breath the idle sail doth fill our oar blades smite the heavy seas under the world the morning breeze treads with the sun the unknown ways thus steer we o'er the solemn main eating the lotus fruit again dreaming that time forever stays singing where absence is thy sting listening to hear our echoes ring through the far rocks 
where sirens sing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mermaid's Glass by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson T'was down among the thimble isles That strew for many liquid miles The waters of Long Island Sound. Our yacht lay in a cove Around the rocky isles with cedars green And channels winding in between. And here a low black reef was spread, And there a sunken nigger head Dimpled the surface of the tide. From one tall island's cliffy side We heard the shaggy goats that fed. The gulls wheeled screaming overhead Or settled in a snowy flock Far out upon the lonely rock Which, like a pillar, seemed to show Some drowned acropolis below. Meanwhile, in the warm sea about, With many a plunge and jolly shout, Our crew enjoyed their morning bath. The hairy skipper in his wrath Lay cursing on the gunwale's rim. He loved a dip, but could not swim. So now and then, with plank afloat, He'd struggle feebly round the boat, And o'er the side climb puffing in, Scraping wide areas off his skin. Then lie and sun each hirsute limb, Once more upon the gunwale's rim, and shout with curses unavailing, Come out! There's wind! Let's do some sailing! A palm-leaf hat that here and there bobbed on the water showed him where some venturous swimmer outward bound escaped beyond his voice's sound, all heedless of their skipper's call. One group fought for the upset yawl. The conqueror sat astride the keel, and deftly pounded with his heel the hands that clutched to his citadel which showed at distance like the shell round which unseen the naiad train sport naked in the middle main myself had drifted far away meanwhile from where the sailboat lay till all unbroken i could hear the waves low whisper in my ear and at the level of mine eye the blue vibrations met the sky sometimes upon my back i lay and watched the clouds while i and they were wafted effortless along sudden i seemed to hear a song yet not a song but some weird strain as though the inarticulate main had found a voice whose human tone interpreted its own dull moan its foamy hiss its surfy roar its gentle lapping on the shore its noise of subterranean waves that grumble in the sea-cliff caves its whish among the drifting miles of gulfweed from the indian isles all all the harmonies were there which ocean makes with earth or air turning i saw a sunken ledge bared by the ebb along whose edge the matted seaweed dripped thereon betwixt the dazzle of the sun and the blue shimmer of the sea i saw or else i seemed to see a mermaid crooning a wild song combing with arm uplifted long the hair that shed its meshes black down the slope whiteness of her back she held a mirror in her hand wherein she viewed sky sea and land her beauty's background and its frame but now as toward the rock i came all suddenly across the glass some startling images seemed to pass for her song rose into a scream over her shoulders one swift gleam of eyes unearthly fell on me and twixt the flashing of the sea and the blind dazzle of the sun i saw the rock but thereupon she sat no longer against the blue only across the reef there flew one snow-white turn and vanished too but coasting that lone island round among the slippery kelp i found a little oval glass that lay upturned and flashing in the ray of the down-looking sun there too with scarce believing eyes i drew and took it captive and while there i rested in the mermaid's lair and felt the merry breeze that blew and watched the sharpies as they flew and snuffed the sea's breath thick with brine and basked me in the sun's warm shine then with my prize i made my way once more to where the sailboat lay i kept the secret and the glass by day across its surface passed the transient shapes of common things which chance within its oval brings 
but when at night i strive to sound the darkness of its face profound again i seem to hear the breeze that curls the waves on summer seas i see the isles with cedars green the channels winding in between the coves with beaches of white sand the reefs where warning spindles stand and through the multitudinous shimmer of waves and sun again the glimmer of eyes unearthly falls on me deep with the mystery of the sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain a holiday eclogue by henry a beers read for librivox dot org by caroline a holiday eclogue above first mason tinkerlink tinkerlink hear the trowels ring feel the merry breezes make the scaffold swing see the skimming swallow brush us with her wing go it with your hammers boys time us while we sing below first student see the yellow sparkle of the nectar in the glass and through the cedar branches sparkles blue the sea hear the sweet piano hear the german lass sing freut euch des lebens oh i love i love the free second student i like the canary better look how he swells his throttle he gurgles like musical water that dances and sings in a bottle above second mason do you mind the students down in the grove drinking their wine and beer that's an easy life they lead first mason so do we up here when the weathercock points west and the look-off's clear third mason housetop jim's the boy for work first mason true for you my dear whistles the girl i left behind me below first student see the dutchman on those settees isn't it like the rhine and the old church tower up over the trees kellner noch ein stein third student i'd like to work with those masons there half way up the sky the air is sweet where the pigeons build and the world is all in their eye second student but love is of the valley the gretchen and the kellner haunt the cheerful levels of the lower story glory in the garret comfort in the cellar i will keep the comfort you may take the glory above first mason look up at the pointers they're drawing close together tis here we get the earliest news of sun and moon and weather we can hear time's pulse are ticking with the whistling weathercock drop your mortar boards my lad it's coming twelve o'clock third mason oh it's hungry that i am with working in the wind but there's a shawl and bonnet below there do you mind it's molly with the dinner pail she's coming in the door faith my belly thinks my throat is cut this half an hour and more the church clock strikes the noon end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Memory by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Drew Conway 27th of November, 2016, Kent I came across the marsh tonight, and though the wind was cold, I stayed a moment on the bridge to note the pally gold That lingered on the darkening bay the creek which ran below was frozen dumb the dreary flats were overspread with snow the college bell began to ring and as the north wind blew its distant janglings out to sea i thought dear friend of you and how one warm september day while yet the woods were green 
we strayed across the happy hills and this wild marsh between. The haystacks dotted here and there, the water meadows wide, the even lines of sluis black were filling with the tide. Then this salt stream, now winter-bound, fled softly through the sedge, retreating from the sparkling sound, and there along its edge. We strolled and marked the far-off sloops, and watched the cattle graze. O'erhead the swallows rushed in troops, while bright with purple haze. West Rock looked down the winding plain, ah, this was long ago. The summer's gone, and you are gone, and everything must go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Amours Passagers by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Amours Passagers Light loves and soon forgotten hates, Heat lightnings of the brooding summer sky, Ye too bred of the summer's heat, Ye too, like summer, fleet, Ye have gone by. Walks in the woods and whispers over gates, Gay rivalries of tennis and croquet, Gone with the summer sweet, Gone with the swallow fleet southward away. Breath of the rose, laughter of maids kissed into silence by the setting moon, wind of the morn that wakes and blows, and hastening night that goes too soon, too soon. Meetings and partings, tokens, serenades, tears, idle tears, and coy denials vain, flower of the summer's rose, say, Will your leaves unclose ever again? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On a Miniature by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Thine old world eyes, each one a violet, Big as the baby rose that is thy mouth, Set me a-dreaming, have our eyes not met in childhood, In a garden of the south? Thy lips are trembling with a song of France, My cousin and thine eyes are dimly sweet, Wildered with reading in an old romance, All afternoon upon the garden seat. The summer wind read with thee, And the bees that on the sunny pages loved to crawl, The skipping reader was the impatient breeze, and turned the leaves, but the slow bees read all. And now thy foot descends the terrace stair, I hear the rustle of thy silk attire, I breathe the musky odors of thy hair, and airs that form thy painted fan respire. Idly thou pausest in the shady walk, thine ear attentive to the fountain's fall, thou markst the flower de luce sway on her stalk, the speckled vergeluse ripening on the wall. Thou hast the feature of my mother's race, The gilded comb she wore, her smile, her eye, The blood that flushes softly in thy face Crawls through my veins beneath the northern sky. As one disinherited through next of kin, Who lingers at the barred ancestral gate, And sadly sees the happy air within Stroll careless through his forfeited estate. Even so I watch thy southern eyes, Lisette, Lady of my lost paradise, And heir of summer days there were my birthright, Yet beauty like thine makes usurpation fair. In the poem. This recording is in the public domain. M. Schwarzwald By Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Joshua Urianza. The winter sunset, red upon the snow, lights up the narrow way that I should go. Winding o'er bare white hilltops where I lie, 
dark churches and the holy evening sky. That path would lead me deep into the west, even to the feet of her I love the best. But this scarce broken track in which I stand runs east, up through the tan woods' midnight land, where now the newly risen moon doth throw the shadows of land stems across the snow. This path would take me to the agar's tree, where stands the swabian girl and waits for me. Her eyes are blacker than the woods at night, and witching as the moon's uncertain light. And there are tones in that low voice of hers, caught from the wind among the Schwarzwald firs, and from the Gutach's echoing waters, when still evening listens in the Forthos Glen. I must, I must, thou wilt forgive me, sweet. My heart flies west, but eastward move my feet. The mad moon brightens as the sunset dies, and yonder hexie draws me with her eyes. Ruck, ruck, and mine engrun in sight, she sings, and with her arms the frozen trunk and rings, and lays upon its bark her little face. How canst thou be so dead in her embrace? So cold against her kisses, happy tree, thou hast no love beyond the western sea. Methinks that at the lightest touch of her, thy wooden trunk should tremble, thy bows stir. But at the pressure of her tender form, thy inmost pith should fill her and grow warm. The torpid sap should race along the vein, the resinous buds should swell. And once again, fresh needles shoot, as though the breeze of spring already through the woods came whispering. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Waiting for Winter by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. What honey in the year's last flowers can hide, These little yellow butterflies may know. With falling leaves they waver to and fro, Or on the swinging tops of asters ride. But I am weary of the summer's pride, And sick September's simulated show. Why do the colder winds delay to blow, And bring the pleasant hours that we abide, To curtained alcove and sweet household talks, Or sweeter silence by our flickering lars, Returning late from autumn evening walks, Upon the frosty hills, while reddening Mars Hangs low between the withered mullen stalks, And upward, Throngs the host of winter stars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Greek to Pan by Henry A. Beers. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. The little creek which yesterday I saw ooze through the sedges, and each brackish vein that sluiced the marsh, now filled and then again sucked dry to glut the sea's unsated maw, all ebb and flow by the same rhythmic law that times the beat of the Atlantic main. They also fasten to the swift moon's train by unseen chords that no less strongly draw. So, poet, may thy life's small tributary, Threading some bitter marsh, obscure, alone, Feel yet one pulse with the broad estuary That bears an emperor's fleets through half a zone, May wait upon the same high luminary And pitch its voice 
to the same ocean's tone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Singer of One Song by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk He sang one song and died, no more but that, A single song and carelessly complete. He would not bind and thresh his chance-grown wheat, nor bring his wild fruit to the common vat to store the acid rinsings thin and flat squeezed from the press or trodden under feet a few slow beads blood-red and honey-sweet oozed from the grape which burst and spilled its fat but time who soonest drops the heaviest things that weight his pack, will carry diamonds long. So through the poet's orchestra, which weaves one music from a thousand stops and strings, pierces the note of that immortal song. High over all, the lonely bugle grieves. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Posthumous by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Put them in print, make one more dint In the age's furrowed rock. No, no, let his name and his verses go. These idle scraps, they would but wrong his memory, whom we honored long. And men would ask, Is this the best? Is this the whole his life expressed? Haply he had no care to tell to all the thoughts which flung their spell around us when the night grew deep, making it seem a loss to sleep exalting the low dingy room to some high auditorium and when we parted homeward still they followed us beyond the hill the heaven had brought new stars to sight opening the map of later night and the wide silence of the snow and the dark whispers of the pines and those keen fires that glittered slow along the zodiac's wintry signs seemed witnesses and near of kin to the high dreams we held within. Yet what is left to us, bereft, save these remains, which now the moth will fret or swifter fire consume? these inky stains on his tablecloth these prints that decked his room his throne this ragged easy chair this battered pipe his counsellor this is the sum and inventory no son he left to tell his story no gold no lands no fame no book Yet one of us, his heirs, who took the impress of his brain and heart, may gain from heaven the lucky art his untold meanings to impart in words that will not soon decay. Then gratefully will such one say, This phrase, dear friend, perhaps is mine. The breath that gave it life was thine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hugh Latimer by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Drew Conway 27th of November, 
2016, Kent. His lips amid the flame outsent, a music strong and sweet, like some unearthly instrument that's played upon by heat. As spicewood tough laid on the coal sets all its perfume free, the incense of his hardy soul rose up exceedingly. To open that great flower, to cold where sun and vernal rain, but fire has forced it to unfold, nor will it shut again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Carsimon by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Carsimon His steed was old, his armor worn, And he was old and worn and gray. The light that lit his patient eyes It shone from very far away. Through gay province he journeyed on, To one high quest his life was true, And so they called him Carsimon, the knight who seeketh the world through. A pansy blossomed on his shield, a token tis, the people say, that still across the world's wide field he seeks la dame de ses pensées. For somewhere on a painted wall, or in the city's shifting crowd, or looking from a casement tall, or shaped of dream or evening cloud, forgotten when, forgotten where, her face had filled his careless eye a moment ere he turned and passed, nor knew it was his destiny. But ever in his dreams it came, divine and passionless and strong, a smile upon the imperial lips no lover's kiss had dared to wrong. He took his armor from the wall, ah, gone since then was many a day. He led his steed from out the stall and sought la dame de ses pensées. The ladies of the troubadours came riding through the chestnut grove. Sir Minstrel, string that lute of yours and sing us a gay song of love. O oh, ladies of the troubadours, my lute has but a single string. Servants fit for paramours, my heart is not in tune to sing. The flower that blooms upon my shield has another soil and spring than that wherein the gaudy rose of light province is blossoming. The lady of my dreams doth hold such royal state within my mind, no thought that comes unclad in gold to that high court may entrance find. So through the chestnut groves he passed, and through the land and far away, nor know I whether in the world he found la dame de ses pensées. Only I know that in the south long to the harp his tale was told, sweet as new wine within the mouth, the small choice words and music old. To scorn the promise of the real, to seek and seek and not to find, yet cherish still the fair ideal, it is thy fate, O restless mind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ecce in Deserto by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Drew Conway 27th of November, 2016 Kent the wilderness a secret keeps, Upon whose guests I go. I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, And yet I know, I know. Some day the viewless latch will lift, The airy door swing wide, To one lost chamber of the wood, Where those shy mysteries hide. One yet unfound receding depth from which the wood thrush sings, still luring into darker shades, in 
in to colder springs. There is no wind abroad today, but hark the pine tops roar. That sleep and in their dreams repeat the music of the shore. What wisdom in their needles stirs, what song is that they sing? Those airs that search the forest's heart, what rumour do they bring? A hushed excitement fills the gloom, and in the stillness clear, the vireo's tell-tale warning rings, tis near, tis near, tis near. As in the fairy tale more loud, the ghostly music plays, when towards enchanted bower, the prince draws closer through the maze. Nay, nay, I track a fleeter game, a wilder than you know, to lairs beyond the inmost haunt of thrush or vireo. This way is past, the scent lies fresh, the ferns still lightly shake. Ever I follow hard upon, but never overtake. To other woods the trail leads on, to other woods and new, where they who keep the secret here will keep the promise too. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Imogen at the Harp by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. To Imogen at the Harp Die Geisterwelt ist nicht verschlossen, dein Sinn ist zu, dein Herz ist tot. Auf, Bade, Schüler, unverdrossen, die irdsche Brust im Morgenrot. Faust Hast thou seen ghosts, hast thou at midnight heard, in the winds talking an articulate word, or art thou in the secret of the sea, and have the twilight woods confessed to thee? So wild thy song, thy smile so faint, so far thine absent eyes from early vision are. Thy song is done, why art thou listening? Spent is the last vibration of the string along the waves of sound. O oh, doth thine ear pursue the ebbing chord in some fine sphere, where wraiths of vanished echoes live and roam, and where thy thoughts, here strangered, find a home? Teach me the path to that uncharted land, discovery's keel hath never notched its strand, no passport may unbear its sealed frontier, too far for utmost sight, for touch too near subtler than light yet all opaque the screen which shuts us from that world outspread between the shows of sense like as an ether thin fills the vast microscopic space wherein the molecules of matter lie annihiled a world whose sound our silence is too wild is elfin music beats too shrill too rare to still the slow pulse of our thicker air a world whose light our darkness is that lies with its sharp edges turned toward mortal eyes like figures painted on a folded fan the broken colours of some hidden plan the few who but an instant's look have had at the spread pattern broadwise have gone mad as in a high-walled oriental street a sudden door flies open and a fleet departing dream the thirsty traveller sees of fountains leaping in the shade of trees so they who once have caught the glimpse divine they have but wet their lips with goblin's wine and plagued with thirst immortal must endure the visions of the heavenly calenture of springs and dewy evening meadows rave while hotly round them shines the tropic wave and the false island of mirage appear uplifted from some transcendental sphere far down below the blue horizon line 
and thirst like theirs is nursed by songs like thine for thou in some crepuscular dim hour when the weak umber moon had hardly power to cast a shadow and a wind half spent creeping among the wayside bushes went hast seen a cobweb spun across the moon a faint eclipse penumbral gone full soon yet marking on the planet's smoky ring a silhouette as of a living thing or on the beach making thy lonely range close upon sunset when the light was strange and the low wind had meanings thou hast known a presence nigh betrayed by shadows thrown on the red sand from bodies out of sight even as by the shell of curving light paired from the dark moon's edge the eye can tell where her full circle rounds invisible teach me the path into that silent land take once again the haunted wires in hand and pour the strain which waking thou hast heard whistled when the night was deep by some lone bird hid in the dark and dewy sycamore when thou hast risen and unbarred the door and walked the garden paths till night was flown listening the message sent to thee alone ah once again thy harp thy voice once more fling back the refluent tide upon the shore all nature grows unearthly all things seem to break and wave off in shapes of dream and through the chinks of matter steals the dawn of skies beyond the solar road withdrawn o oh, flood my soul with that pure morning red it is the sense that's shut the heart's that's dead all open still the world of spirits lies would we but bathe us in its red sunrise end of poem this recording is in the public domain the ideas of the pure reason by henry a beers read for librivox dot org by larry wilson i saw in dreams a constellation strange thwarting the night its big stars seemed to range northward across the zenith and to keep calm footing along heaven's ridge-pole high while round the pole the sullen bear did creep and dizzily the wheeling spheres went by they from their watch-towers in the topmost sky looked down upon the rest nor eastward swerved nor west though procyon's candle dipped below the verge and the great twins of leda again declined toward the horizon line and prone orion sprawling headlong urged his flight into the far pacific surge i heard a voice which said those wonders bright are hung not on the hinges of the night but set to vaster harmonies they run straight on and turn not with the turning sphere nor make an orbit about any sun no glass can track the courses that they steer by what dark paths they vanish and appear the starry flocks that still are climbing heaven's hill will pasture westward down its sloping lawn but yon wild herd of planets who can say through what far fields they stray around what focus their eclipse is drawn whose shining makes their transcendental dawn i told my vision to a learned man who said on no celestial globe or plan can those unset unrisen stars be found how might such uncomputed motions be among the ordered spheres heaven's clock is wound to keep one time idle our dreams and we blown by the wind as the light family of leaves but still i dream and still those planets seem through heaven their high unbending course to take and a voice cries freedom and truth are we and immortality god is our son and through the morning break across my soul still plays their shimmering wake in the poem this recording is in the public domain
On Guard by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Drew Conway 27th of November, 2016 Kent O oh, churl, drunk all, and left no friendly drop to help me after. Romeo and Juliet He has chosen the death that is easy, and left me the life that is hard. He has emptied the cup to the lees. He has left me alone to keep guard. Remains not a drop in the beaker of the bittersweet cordial he quaffed. The strong has forsaken his weaker and stolen his anodyte draught. The cause that he taught me to cherish the weapons he trained me to wield, he has given it to over to perish and thrown down the sword and the shield. Oh, how shall the coward perceiver when the hero slinks out of the fight or weakness keeps up the endeavour abandoned by desperate might? The hour of stern trial has found me the sentinel fires are burnt low, and I hear in the shadows around me the stealthy approach of the foe. Be it so then, my master, my leader, these helpless ones dear to you these, will I fend while I may, though I bleed, or am beaten with blows to my knees? Lo here where your body lies fallen, I draw from its scabbard the sword, And raise it how feebly and call on, Your spirit, my captain, my lord. The watchfire is sunken to embers, With signals the darkness is starred, Let them come, there is one who remembers, there is one who will stand upon guard. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sursum Corda by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. Sursum Corda. Take courage, heart. Why dost thou faint and falter? Why is thy light turned darkness ere the noon? The wind blows west, no clouds the heaven alter, Night comes not yet, with night too comes the moon. Alas, alas, the dewy morning weather, The tender light that on the meadows lay, When youth and hope and I set out together, Light youth falls hope that left me on the way. Take courage yet, thou art not unattended. See love and peace keep step on either hand. How green the vales, the sky how blue, how splendid the strong white sunshine sleeps across the land. Alas, the thrush's song hath long had ending. I heard at dawn among the pine woods cool. The brook is still whose rocky stair descending. I drank at sunrise from each rosy pool. The noon is still, the songs of dawn are over, Yet turn not back to prove thy memories vain. The mist upon the hills canst thou recover, Or bring to eastern skies the bloom again. But courage still, without return or swerving, Across the globe's huge shadow keep the track, Till unperceived, the slow meridian's curving that leads thee onward, yet shall lead thee back to stand again with daybreak on the mountains, and where the paths of night and morning meet, to drink once more of youth's forgotten fountains when thou hast put the world between thy feet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love, Death, and Life by Henry A. Beers 
Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. A warm wind comes in rushes. The night is thick and sweet. I cannot see the bushes. The tall syringa bushes above the gate that meet, Whose fallen blooms she crushes under her heedless feet. But their heavy rich perfume is round us in the gloom, Which lends its friendly cover to bashful maid and lover, Which cheats me of her blushes and makes her kiss complete. Way down the village street a lantern swings and dances In front of the old church porch and throws its tell-tale glances on the puddles and the plashes and flares in the wind like a torch and scatters sudden flashes on the elm leaves overhead but you need have no dread of that harmless far-off spark for the night is thick and dark oh the dark is thick and sweet so closer let the beat of your heart encounter mine how you tremble like a leaf Oh, you do not need to fear any shame or any grief while my arms around you twine and the night wind pours its wine. Come nearer, still more near, press closer, closer yet. Your cheeks are warm and wet, like this wind from out the south and warm and wet your mouth, and yon lantern won't discover the maiden and her lover. Tis only the sexton, nothing more. There was a funeral today the sexton locking the church door, locking it up and going away. Why should it fall on a day like this? What has death to do in a world of bliss? O oh, passionate black night! O oh, rush of the southern breeze laden with blossoms and rain, asserter of life in its right, cherisher, breeder of things, swelling the sap in the trees, swelling the blood in the vein, filling the rivers and springs, Whisper the girl at my side, quicken her pulse with thy breath, teach her the way of a bride, teach her to take and give. What hast thou to do with us, death? By God we live. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dying Pantheist to the Priest by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Tina Franklin Take your ivory Christ away. No dying God shall have my knee, While live gods breathe in this wild wind And shout from yonder dashing sea. When March brings back the Adonis flower, No more the white processions meet With incense to the risen Lord About the pillared temple's feet. From tusk of boar, from thrust of spear, The dead rise not. At Easter tide, the same sun dances on their graves, love's darling and the crucified. Yet still the year's returning tide flows greenly round each ruined plinth, breaking on fallen shafts in foam of crocus and of hyacinth. Tossing a spray of swallows high to flutter lightly on the breeze and fleck with tiny spots of shade the sunshine on the broken frieze. I know the gray-green asphodels still sheet the dim Elysian mead, and ever by dark Lethe's wells the poppy sheds her ghostly seed. And once, oh, once, when sunset lay blood-red across the winter sea, where on the sands we drained our flasks and danced and cried our evoe. Among the tossing cakes of ice and spouting of the frozen spray, we saw their white limbs twist and whirl, the ancient sea-gods at their play. The gold-brown liquor burned my heart, the icy tempest stung my brow, the twanging of Apollo's lyre, I heard it as I hear it now. Oh, no, the old gods are not dead. I think that they will never die. But I who lie upon this bed in mortal anguish, what am I? A wave that rises with a breath above the infinite watery plain to foam and sparkle in the sun a moment ere it sink again. The eternal undulation runs. A man I die, perchance to be, Next life, a white throat on the wind, a daffodil on Tempe's lee. They lied who said that Pan was dead. Life was, life is, and life shall be. So take away your crucifix, the ever-living gods for me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Upland by Henry A. Beers 
Read for LibriVox.org by Drew Conway, 27th of November, 2016, Kent. We often go a-driving across the pleasant land, In summer through the pine woods dark, or by the ocean strand. But when the orchards blossom, and when the apples fall, We seek the high hill country that props the mountain wall. Old farms with moss-stone fences, old grassy roads that wind, Forever on and upward to higher fields behind, By ancient bush-grown pastures bestrewn with boulders grey, And lonely meadow slopes that bear thin crops on upland hay. As terrace over terrace we climb the mountain stair, more solitary grow the ways, more wild the farms and rare, and slenderer in their rocky beds the singing brooks that go, down slipping to the valley stream a thousand feet below. Above us and above us Still the grim escarpments rise, Till homeward we must turn at last, Or ere the daylight dies, And leave unscaled the summit height, The even ridge overhead, Where smoulder through the cedar screen The sunset embers red. What should we see if once we won On that top step to stand? A wondrous valley well beyond, a far-stretched tableland. Almost it seems as though there lay the threshold of the sky, and that the foot which crossed the sill would enter heaven thereby. And when, dear heart, the years have left us once again alone, and from our empty nest the broods have scattered forth and flown, shall we not have the old horse round and take the well-known track? into the high hill country and never more come back end of poem this recording is in the public domain the remainder by henry a beers read for librivox.org by bruce Gachuk. now faith is dead and hope is deadly sick and joy dear joy she died so long ago i have forgot her face but these are quick black care and stinging shame and bitter woe then what is left in my pandora's chest courage is left but mated with despair who should have wed with hope yet be ye blessed rise up and take your blessing happy pair i lay in thine sad bride this princely hand in all the world there is no nobler name and thou brave groom though tis not what we planned take her she will be true be thou the same courage and sorrow might these two give birth o oh, thought too bold o oh, dream too sweet too wild though joy dear joy be dead and cold in earth her ghost is peace and love is sorrow's child and a poem this recording is in the public domain the pasture bars by henry a beers read for LibriVox.org by drew conway 27th of november 2016 kent the hunted stag, now nearly spent, turns homeward to his lair. The wounded Bedouin seeks his tent and finds safe shelter there. 
So life returns upon its track, we toil, we fight, we roam, till their long shadows point us back, and evening brings us home. Tonight beside the pasture bars, I heard the whippoorwill, while one by one the early stars came out above the hill. I heard the tinkle of the spring, I heard the cattle pass, slow through the dusk and lingering to crop the wayside grass. O weary world of fret and strife, O noisy years and vain, what have you paid me for my life since last along this lane? A barefoot boy I drove the cows in summer twilight still, and paused beneath the orchard boughs to list the whippoorwill. Come, peace of God that passeth all, our understanding sight, fall on me with the dews that fall, and with the falling light. Among these native hills and plains, by these baptismal streams, wash off the city's fever stains, bring back my boyhood's dreams. Beside the doors where life began, here let it find its close, and be its brief remaining span, all given to repose. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rising of the Curtain by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson We sit before the curtain and we heed the pleasant bustle. The ushers hastening up the aisles, the fans and programs rustle. The boy that cries librettos and the soft incessant sound of talking and low laughter that buzzes all around. How very old the drop scene looks. A thousand times before I've seen that blue paint dashing on that red distemper shore. The castle and the guazo sky, the very ilex tree, they have been there a thousand years, a thousand more shall be. All our lives we have been waiting for that weary daub to rise. We have peeped behind its edges, as if we were God's spies. We have listened for the signal, yet still as in our youth the colored screen of matter hangs between us and the truth. When in my careless childhood I dwelt beside a wood, I tired of the clearing where my father's cabin stood, and of the wild young forest paths that coaxed me to explore, then dwindled down or led me back to where I stood before. But through the woods before our door a wagon track went by, above whose utmost western edge there hung an open sky, and there it seemed to make a plunge or break off suddenly, as though beneath that open sky it met the open sea. Oh, often have I fancied in the sunset's dreamy glow that mine eyes had caught the welter of the ocean waves below, and the wind among the pine tops with its low and ceaseless roar was but an echo from the surf on that imagined shore. Alas, as I grew older, I found that road led down to no more fair horizon than the squalid factory town. So all life's purple distances, when nearer them I came, have played me still the same old cheat, the same, the same, the same. And when, O King, the heaven departeth as a scroll, wilt thou once more the promise break thou madest to my soul? Shall I see thy feasting presence thronged with barren knight and page? Or will the curtain rise upon a dark and empty stage? For lo, quick undulations across the canvas run. The footlights brighten suddenly. The orchestra has done. And through the expectant silence rings loud the prompter's bell. The curtain shakes. It rises. Farewell, dull world. Farewell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
End of the Two Twilights by Henry A. Beers